Hello and welcome back to another session. Today's session we are going to see how to host a website with AWS CloudFront and S3 as origin. Before getting into the console, let's discuss about CloudFront on a high level. CloudFront is a content delivery network service offered by AWS, in short CDN. So as the name suggests, it's used to deliver content to your end users and the content can be stored in AWS S3, EC2 or load balancers. These are called as origins, that is from where the content originates from. Apart from these AWS services, you can even host the content in your own custom origins. So why is this even required and why can't the users directly access the content from the origin itself? It's because of the following features. The first main reason is CloudFront offers global edge network. As you see in the background, these edge locations are across the globe and your content is cached in these locations, which reduces the latency and serves the global user base. It ensures that your content is delivered securely as it automatically integrates with AWS WAF and SSL encryption is enabled and also prevents any DDoS attacks. You need not worry about any of it. As your content is cached redundantly in various edge locations, the availability of your application increases and also it's cost effective. There are various discounts that AWS offers for longer term commitments and includes pay as you go model. Now let's get into the console and see how to host a website using CloudFront with S3 as origin. Okay, so we are in the console now. The first thing which we want to do is create a bucket and upload few objects to it, which will act as the origin for us. So I'm naming the bucket as listen to learn and using the region as US East and blocking all the public access so that any of your bucket content will not be able to, to be accessed directly. Enabling the bucket versioning and leaving rest of the configurations pretty much default. So we have our bucket and the objects of the bucket are not public. Let's go ahead and upload few files which will be served through CDN. So I'm just adding a couple of HTML files here. And once those are uploaded, let's just quickly check if the buckets, if the files are accessible. So I'm just going to try accessing one of the files. So ideally you should be getting an access denied. Uh, this is because we haven't enabled any of the permissions for any of the files. So now let's go get into CloudFront and see how to host it using CloudFront. So for that, first we have to create a distribution. So this distribution is the one which will link to your origin and we have to select a content delivery method. So in case of origin, we are going to select S3 or S3 bucket. So you have various options like load balancers and other origins as well. But for this use case, we are going to select S3 bucket. And then if you have a specific prefix path, you can specify that. For now, uh, we have stored our content in the root, so we are going to leave it as such. And if you like, you can enable origin shield, which is acting as a one more layer of shield before directly accessing your content from the origin itself. And you can enable restricting the bucket access, so uh, the users will not be able to access your bucket directly apart from through the CloudFront, so which will by default create a access identity. And then we can ask AWS itself to create a bucket policy for us, which will state that only CloudFront has access to the bucket and its content. And these are the connection attempts that CloudFront will make to your origin to grab your content. So it's very helpful in case of hosting your own uh, website. In case of S3, this should all work with the default settings. 
So I'm going to go ahead with the default settings. And if your application requires any custom headers to be passed, then you can specify them there. And viewer protocol policy, it's always advised to redirect your HTTP to HTTPS so that it stays secured. And if your application always serves HTTPS only content, then you can go for that as well. And allowed HTTP methods. In this case, we are just going to go with get and head as this is only a static website. In case of dynamic websites, you can go ahead and select put post options as well. And the cached HTTP methods are going to be again get and head because those are the only methods which we have enabled. And then you can attach a cache policy to your CloudFront distribution. So AWS by default provides few of these policies. We can try to view what the policy says. It mainly controls the TTL settings, that is time to live. That is how long you want to retain the content in the cache before considering it as a cache uh, miss and reaching out to the origin to grab the actual content. So the minimum TTL by default is one second, and then the maximum TTL is 365 days. And the default TTL is one day. And you have the option to change this by creating your own policy as per your application requirements. So right now I'm going with the default. And the origin request policy allows you to specify any headers or the query string parameters that needs to be passed to your origin. And smooth streaming, if enabled, it is used for delivering video content and restricting viewer access to any signed URLs or signed cookies. And even you can attach a Lambda function which will run at your edge location itself in case you have to execute any specific uh, code specific to your application. And also you have an option to select the edge locations which needs to be enabled. By default, it is all edge locations, but even you can constrain it to specific locations like US or Canada and or uh, Asia based on your uh, user base, which will result in some cost reduction. And also you can specify any alternate domain names uh, if you are hosting your own domains. And then you can specify your own custom SSL certificate or use the default CloudFront certificate. So I'm going with the default one here. The supported HTTP versions. Right now the versions are HTTP 2 and HTTP 1.1. If you are using a lower version, you can use that as well. And you can enable logging if required. And you have an option to either leave the distribution state enabled or disabled, and you can enable it as a later point. So let's go ahead and create the distribution. So if you click on the distributions, you will see that the uh, distribution creation is in progress. This will take almost four or five minutes. And if you go into the uh, identity access, you should be able to see a new identity created there. So let's wait for a couple of minutes for the distribution to get created. So we have the distribution created. I actually paused the video for a while uh, to let the distribution be created. So before trying to access it, I want to show you something quickly. That is the bucket policy which CloudFront has created as for us. So if you go into the buckets and take a look at the permissions, you should be seeing a bucket policy attached now, which allows get object only from the CloudFront origin access identity. So this is the way how CloudFront is accessing your S3 objects. So this is very important to restrict the access so that your objects still stay private and no one will be able to access your objects. So this identity ID will match the identity ID in your bucket policy. Okay, so now let's go ahead and see, try accessing our domain. So just grab the domain name and open a new window and hit it there. 
So in along with that, I'm just including the index.html as a file that we want to access. So there you go. So you'll be able to access your index file directly. So this is as simple. You can uh, host various uh, other origins this in a similar way. So it's very simple and very easy to uh, organize it. So that's it for today, guys. Hope you found it useful. If there are any questions, please leave them in the comments below. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.